Hey, last week I asked you to send me your code repositories so I can roast them in a video and we can all learn from your mistakes. And oh lord, did you send me GitHub repositories. And one example really stuck out to me. It's a React login component. It's written at a very beginner level. You're gonna see that here in a second. And let's take that beginner component and transform it into something way more advanced, readable and maintainable. Nothing I say in this video is personal. I am roasting your code so we can all learn from it. So the repo this guy has sent me is a really good example on how to not structure your React code. There's a lot of room for improvement and uh, this is the site you land on. Well, as a user, you have no idea what's happening. It seems like this is some kind of search bar, but uh, you know, no response from server, try again. Okay, and then below that, there's a login um, screen, which we're gonna focus on in this video because there's a lot to be desired in this code. Let's look at how this guy has done the code implementation and then why I think there's a way better way to do this, to write much more clean and maintainable code than this. The first thing we notice when we look into the code, and again, this is for the login component, this one right here, that's the code we're looking at right now. There's a bunch of issues that really come to light right away. For example, the naming, AT. What the hell is AT, right? It seems like AT for checking whether user is logged in or not. This is supposed to be the access token, but then why don't you call it access token? Nobody knows what the hell AT is. It's really unreadable, so just name it access token. Okay, then we can see there are really unhelpful comments like use ref and then a use ref right below that. I used to do this in my own code. I'm guilty of this. This comment ain't helping anyone, chief. We can get rid of this. States for the username and password. I, I mean, bro, we can tell they're right there. These comments are totally unnecessary. Comments should explain if necessary what your code does and why it does that and not state the obvious on what the hell this is. Because if you ever decide to change these states and add like a third state right down here, then guess what? You're also gonna have to maintain the comments, which is a really, really bad idea. So just get rid of the obvious comments. They add no value to your code whatsoever. We're keeping track of the username and password separately in state as well as the loading and message state. What the hell is a MSG supposed to be? I'm just assuming this is a message to show an error message because we're setting that to a string, but the naming really isn't optimal. It doesn't speak for itself at all and users new to your repo have to guess what it is. Not optimal. And then we're setting that to an empty string whenever the username or password changes. There are way better ways to handle just this behavior. A window dot scroll to not ideal because users don't expect to be scrolled for them at all. You don't want to scroll for users without telling them. That leads to a very, very bad user experience. Let's get rid of this. It doesn't matter. And then we can see there's an input ref dot current dot focus. So what I'm guessing this user is trying to do is whenever we are rendering the component, we're trying to focus on an input area. There's a much cleaner, really easy way to do this. Instead of having to use a ref for this at all, what we can do is remove that, go down to the input field where we actually um, want to focus on and simply add something called auto focus inside of the input. By the way, if you're wondering why these are all React custom components, it's not because they actually are, but rather because this guy is using um, styled components to style their components, which is not inherently bad. Is it better than CSS? Probably is Tailwind superior, much superior in my opinion. Yes, I would never use style components for my personal apps, but I guess that's preference and not bad code in any way. And now for the worst part, it's the login handler. There is much room for improvement in here. We are doing no validation on the user input at all. The user can type in whatever we want and that is then sent to this API endpoint right here. The on success handling is done right here below the response without any comment. If you're so keen on commenting, why don't you comment that here? Like a login successful, for example, that would actually be kind of helpful in easily distinguishing this in this pretty ugly try catch block that you've got going here. We are mutating a res that we are declaring up here in a let. Why? I don't know probably to show the msg that we have done earlier yeah right down here so we're setting the msg to res by the way this has nothing to do with the server response this is a custom text you're sending to the user so it shouldn't be named res because res comes from the server and then in the catch right here we can see something that i would do much differently as well for example the res we're setting that to no server response this is user facing. The purpose of your error handling is to send the user messages that they can work with that tells them 
what is wrong? Do you think any user knows what this means? No server response. They might know what it means, but what should they do? It doesn't tell them. That is a really, really bad message to send to users. Rather, you want to send something like, something went wrong, please try again. That's a very clear instruction to the user on what they should do. They don't care if your servers gave you no response. It doesn't matter to the user. And just screaming at the user to provide valid credentials, exclamation point, probably isn't the best idea either. So let's take a look at how I would do this component and refactor it to make it much more clean, much more maintainable, and actually in TypeScript, because I tried refactoring this in JavaScript and oh my God, do I hate JavaScript, but enough whining from me, let's refactor this. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. I've opened the project here on the right hand side and removed almost all of this stuff. You can see there are some original imports here that are also in the old login on the left hand side and on the right hand side, this is where we're gonna refactor this component into actually pretty good code, at least how I would do it personally. We can see there are some additional imports we need for refactoring. We're gonna use some libraries that massively improve the user experience. For example, React hook form. We're gonna use React query for this, React hot host to display toast notifications to the user, and finally Zot for some client-side and server-side validation that are gonna make things much, much easier. The first thing we're gonna do is if you go down here, you can see when you submit a request to login, there is no validation done at all. And that's a problem. You could just submit an empty username, empty password, spam the API with that if you wanted to, nothing stopping you. And that's not what we want. So we're gonna define a username. That is a string, a minimum of three characters and a maximum of 20 characters with really good messages in case the user types in something wrong that we're gonna display in our form later on. Then a password, we want a password validator. So a minimum of three characters in most production apps, that's likely around eight characters. Then a maximum of 20, that would likely be higher as well. And then a regular expression that I decided to comment out, but for additional security, because optimally you share this between your client and your server, the exact same validator. So you can validate the same thing, client and server side. Um, in that case, we would definitely want a regex ensuring that our password is somewhat secure when the user logs in with it or creates it. Okay, we can infer a type from that. The original is in JavaScript. I could not bring myself to work in JavaScript. It's that bad, I can never go back. Um, yeah, I, I'm just not gonna do it. So I converted this to TypeScript. And then a login response that has an access token. Why are we doing this? Well, if you take a look at the response, we are expecting something called a response.data.access. What the hell is a dot .access? Why would you call it that? You call it access token right here. So why would you call it dot .access in your server response? I don't understand it. So I decided to call it access token, what it is supposed to be named. And then the JSX is mostly gonna be the same. So if we take a look at the JSX right here, um, everywhere there's an error is where I changed something. There's some minor differences. So for example, the loading is now an is loading. And on the form submission, we can see no longer is a really big as ugly try catch block, this one right here being invoked, but rather we are calling a simple function with the data we get and then call something like a login handler that we're gonna get to in a second. And you can see um, a bit of stuff has changed here too. Like we are registering an input instead of keeping track instead. And also we're displaying error messages right below here. This is all erroring, but we're gonna fix that right now. So why is this erroring? Well, let's start with importing the access token. And we do this from Redux because the original is in JavaScript and not in TypeScript. We can see if we hover over the user, it's just a guessing which properties exist. If I were to say dot this doesn't exist, nobody would care. JavaScript does not tell you, which is horrible. So in our case, I decided to make the Redux store actually type safe. So we get some user access token, which can be either string or null. But besides the type safety, this is the same as in the original. Then we're gonna destructure a lot of stuff from something called use form. Now, what is this, this use form? This comes from a library called, and it's way up here at the top, React hook form. And if you work with forms in React, this is probably the way to go. It makes working with forms in a type safe way really, really intuitive. And you know the best thing about it, the validator we have written right here, the login validator, we can pass that into our form 
And then when the user types in a username that does not match our schema right here, they're gonna get this error or that error, or if the password doesn't match, they're gonna get this or that error. Really, really user-friendly stuff. That's why we want React Hook Form. It makes working with forms so much better. The imports or the hooks are gonna stay the same because we are doing client-side navigation. This is not a Next.js project, but a React router or a simple React project. So these stay the same. They're totally fine, nothing wrong with them. And then the ugly use effect that we have right here Oh, I've already refactored this, by the way, where we removed the scroll and so on. We can just move this into a simple line and clean it up visually just a bit. Awesome. So let's get a location from. In the original, this was just called from. Now, why would you call it from? I don't know. It's a very nothing saying word. So let's call it location from. Where is the user coming from? I think that naming is just a bit better. And then let's actually work on the login handler, which was the biggest problem single-handedly with the original. This is the login handler. We're setting a bunch of states. We're inside of a try catch block and then doing a really ugly um, error handling right here with um, pretty unuser friendly messages. That's not what we want. Let's fix it. The way we do that is using something called a use mutation. That is something we import from a library called way up here, TanStack React Query. It makes working with fetch requests so much easier because the loading states and everything else, caching, error states, and so on are all handled for us. Let's quickly return some stuff here so we can get, get rid of the error and let me explain this. So first off, I've moved the login URL inside of React Query because what's the point of declaring the login URL right here? I don't know. Normally, this goes into a config file because you reuse it across your entire application. In my case, I just decided to move it in here and add the comment for simplicity. Then we'll try making the original request. It's the same thing. And I think by default, Axios does this in application JSON. So no need to add this part right here, the content type. We can just send this request. And because the server is hosted on a different port and I don't have access to that code, we are mocking this in the catch block as the mocked response, where we simply get an access token back. Now let's move on to this whole mess right here with a dispatch and the from and else and catch and it just looks really bad on the old login let's improve it so first off let's add an on success handler what should happen if we are logged in successful if the request is successful which in our case it will always be because it's mocked in the catch block well first off we're gonna dispatch to redux so we have access to the username and access token globally across our entire app there's nothing wrong with this if you want to handle it that way totally fine and we get the form values by calling something called get values from react hook form so you can notice in our version there is not a single state that we're keeping track of. It's all done for us. Now there's still state, of course, but we are not explicitly keeping track of that. And we could also get rid of the input ref because we added the autofocus on the input. That whole thing is totally redundant and we've removed that in this cleaner implementation. Let's go back down here and see how we can further improve this. So we've done the on success handler. Then you can see this ugly block. The if from isn't equal to an empty string, then we're gonna navigate to from with a replace property and else we're gonna navigate to slash dashboard. Well, I've summed it up to just these two lines where the nav target is either this or if it's um, undefined or null or a falsy value, then it's gonna be the dashboard. And then we're gonna navigate to just that and only replace if the location from is a truthy value. Now for this monstrosity right here that no amount of alcohol could fix, um, we're doing it in this on error handler right here. Because we're making an Axios request, we can check if the error is an instance of a certain class, an Axios error. And if it is, in that case, we can check for a certain status code and say invalid credentials if we return a 401 from our server. This is a really good idea. And then if we don't know the status code, we can send something like something went wrong, please try again later to tell the user what they should do instead of just no server response. Like what user is going to appreciate a message like that? And that's already it. That's the entire component refactored. And let's take a look at if this actually um, works. So let's restart the application. Let's type in just an A and click login. And do you see this? This is beautiful. By the way, the styling is really bad in the original too, uh, but this is not about styling and um, I just want to focus on good, clean code in this video. We can see username must be at least three characters long and password must be at least eight characters long. And as soon as soon as we fix that, we can see the error is gone. And same for the password. 
If we now hit login, we are going to get redirected beautifully to our original link target, to whatever we have defined right here as the nav target. And uh, let's see if we could actually reduce the lines of code. It's not really about that, but let's just do a quick check. Could we? No, we actually added a few lines of code, but what did we get in return for adding these few lines of code? Let's quickly summarize. Well, we are not keeping track of any refs or any states at all, which is really, really nice. Just the use selector and that's it. The navigation is the same if there already is an access token in the user effect, there's nothing wrong with this. And then the whole logic for the login handler, we've moved into this use mutation function right here with an on success, with an on error and all the states handled for us instead of, instead of having to maintain them or self and mutating a res property right here. Um, for example, right here, login successful or with this monstrosity. Hey, if you're still watching the video, I really appreciate you. I hope, I really hope you learned a ton from this video. Again, nothing in this video I said is personal at all. I am just roasting the code. And if the guy that sent me the repo is watching, honestly, I think you're doing a great job. You're on the way to becoming a way better React developer. And I really hope you take the feedback and incorporate it into your future apps because that's how you grow. Thanks everybody for participating. We might do this in the future and maybe then I'm gonna take a few more projects and do smaller examples in a video and because this was very in-depth on one component and then maybe we could take like three projects and wrap it into one five to ten minute video let me know if that's something you'd like that's gonna be it for me for this video and i'm gonna see you in the next one have a good one and bye bye